Hello and welcome back to the Bobby and Beardy Show. Today we're going to be talking about Pixar's Inside Out 2, which I was shocked to learn was the sequel to Pixar's 2015 film, Inside Out. I'm Bobby, he's McBeardy, and just so you know, there are time codes below, should you wish to use them. McBeardy, hello. How the devil are you, sir? Uh, I'm good, tired. I think this is my standard way of being, <laughs> um, but today is my my one day off over like a six week period properly and i've had to clean the shed which is always a fun job and then you you find out there's a tiny bit of water getting in so you have to deal with that and then yeah just a whole whole load of things but it's done i had a nice barbecue last night nice uh watched the first game of the euros which i very much enjoyed had people around it was good scotland did well overall uh, yeah they did as well as to be fair better than i expected i'm not gonna lie they scored a goal Uh, well, technically they didn't. It was a known goal, but <laughs> well, you know, it's on their score sheet. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't watch any of the game, but I'm aware that Scotland got battered five yeah. one by Germany. So it's expected. But yeah, no, it was good. I'm good. Things are good. Uh, I told you new TV stuff potentially. Hint, hint. Maybe no. Who knows? Um, that's all in my little world. What's in your world? <laughs> well, um, first of all, I just want to complain about where the hell is summer? Where's my summer? It's mm. June, I'm wearing a jumper. What's happening? I should be in shorts and a t-shirt, too warm, and complaining about it. Instead, jumper, complaining about it. Uh, my bathroom is almost, but not quite finished. Hopefully that's getting wrapped up on Monday. It should have been wrapped up yesterday, though, so that's a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, other than that, all right. Doing all right. Cool. Have you seen any good films lately? <laughs> Uh, I saw an all right one. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's talk about it. Not, no. I'll give you the no, rundown. Okay. <laughs> Inside Out 2. Inside Out 2 is an animated coming-of-age film by Pixar. As mentioned, this is the sequel to the Inside Out from 2015 and is directed by Kelsey Mann uh, in his feature directorial debut. Uh, his filmography previously lists him uh, as a Pixar senior creative team member. Or a story supervisor uh, dating, darting uh, back to Monsters <laughs> University in 2013. He's been involved with basically all of their recent stuff. Elemental, Lightyear, Turning Red, Soul, Onward, and a couple of more that I couldn't be bothered mm. to list. Uh, produced by Mark Nielsen for a screenplay that was written by uh, Meg LeFauve and Dave Holstein with a story by Man and LeFauve. Uh, the film stars Amy Poehler, Phyllis Smith, Lewis Black, Diane Lane, Kyle MacLachlan, uh, Tony Hale, Lisa Lapira, Maya Hawke, Ayo Adibri, mm, I think I said that one correctly, uh, Adele Exalapolor, oh no, oh no, Adele. the trend continues. <laughs> I even, I tried to phonetic this one out and I just panicked, so it's Adele, exact pop. Oh. Exact Apollos, Apollos, Exact Apollos, something like that. Ah, I'm so sorry, I can't read. Uh, Paul Waterhauser and Kensington Tallman. Tallman, by the way, fantastic name. I love that. Mm. Uh, I like if they were short. <laughs> yes, the irony. <laughs> Beautiful. A few cast changes from the first film. Uh, that not that I was aware of going into it or, or even noticed during. Essentially, it all okay. comes down to money. Uh, Amy Poehler accepted an offer of... Uh, do you want the goss? I'll give you the goss. I'm going to give you the goss. Yeah, give Say you, the goss. you want the goss, want the goss. I'm giving you the goss. <laughs> <laughs> Amy Poehler accepted a, an offer for a five million uh, plus bonuses to reprise her role as Joy. Phyllis Smith and Lewis Black also reprised their roles uh, as Sadness and Anger. However, following a dispute over pay, Phil Hader and Mindy Kaling uh, declined to reprise their roles as fear and disgust. Essentially, um, they were, and the rest of the main emotions were only offered $100,000 uh, to return each, which is the equivalent, apparently, I didn't do the maths, I've stolen this, uh, of 2% of Polar's 5 million salary. So they were like, nah, <laughs> nah, not doing it. <laughs> Uh, 100,000, a lot of money. Compare that to 5 million, not much money. <laughs> it's about 2%. <laughs> it's about, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that is the correct maths, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I assumed it would be, but I, if it was wrong, I didn't want to take the blame. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but Beardy, I've done it again. I've forgotten what the story was. <laughs> You always do. Do you ever pay attention to these? Actually, films? I tell you what. I tell you what. Let me just tell you about. Let me tell you about the release date and budget as well. Before before you remind me of oh, the yeah, story. Oh yeah, probably a good thing. 
Because if I've we don't know what the dollary dues are. What are the dollary dues? Our uh, release date was the 14th of June 2024. Budget, a huge budget in my opinion, of 200 million dollary dues, American, not Australian. Wow. Uh, worldwide box office so far, somewhere between 20 and 28 million. Uh, reportedly could have an opening weekend of at le- uh, like 80 million to 100 million, maybe more. So that's pretty yeah. tasty. Um, yeah. And in, especially in a year of uh, quite poor box office um very much so so far a lot of like big films kind of flopping a lot uh the fall guy furiosa things like and and quite a few others this one could be onto a a bit of winner garfield by the way a film i despise doing very nicely (laughs) (laughs) oh i hate that film so much um right what's the story though i can't remember still So, obviously, this film comes out about 10 years after the original, but it's only been two years in the life of Riley. Uh, Riley is doing well in school, uh, good to family. All of her little islands that make her her going very, very strong. Joy, fear, happiness. All of her emotions are very much getting on. And then, big alarm, uh, the puberty happens. (laughs) I think that's how they say it in the first film. Uh, (laughs) Happens overnight. Uh, Happens overnight, obviously, instantly uh, everything falls apart and they're very confused, don't know what's going on, the console is massive, new things they can't really understand and there's new emotions. Uh, I do enjoy the fact that they have uh, anxiety, envy, embarrassment and ennui, which I would like to point out, I knew what ennui was beforehand. All right, brag I'm enough of a man to admit that <laughs> I knew this from the Gilmore Girls because I watched that show and it was great. So shut up, everyone. It's a great show. Um, but yeah, basically, these these new emotions start uh, taking over, especially anxiety, trying to make sure that Riley's future goes well. There is some news given to her by her best friends that causes this sort of anxious issue and potentially changes the way her life's going to go. And it's very much the story of how she deals with the start of puberty and this sort of change in her life um over the course of three days at hockey camp yeah of course well to be fair isn't that how puberty hit you i think oh, it was, yeah, well, yeah, yeah you don't <laughs> start pubertally until you get an invitation to hockey camp we all know that so. exactly yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> like, i just went to sleep one day woke up poof, beard <laughs> <laughs> i woke up one day still no beard um <laughs> oh dear so you saw an earlier uh thanks for reminding me about the story by the way because i just i just can't believe i forgot every time mm. I um, even with all my notes explaining what the story is, I still forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you saw an earlier showing than me yesterday. Um, you went yes. in the early afternoon? Uh, we went exactly at 12. So both Tegan and I took the day off to see this film. Nice. And buy the cups, of well, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bought the uh, promotional cup um, <laughs> and I spent a lot of money on that. But it is definitely worth it because the sadness cup makes Tegan very happy. <laughs> Also, Tegan is right here. She just walked up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. So, how busy was your cinema? Because uh, mine was. Oh, surprisingly. But, f- like, the, the showing I wanted to see uh, prior but couldn't do because of work was packed. The one I was in was packed. The one after that was packed. Yeah. Yeah. So, ours was pretty busy as well. Like, we got there, we were ordering some, like, food and drink beforehand. And the guy was saying, like, I came into work. Late morning, I was thinking, you know what? This is going to be an easy shift. It's a Friday. No, tons of kids. Like, people have been brought here by their <laughs> so schools. Um, and the thing is, like, okay, so uh, a bit of background. Tegan works um, in charity with kids. Um, so she loved the first Inside Out film. She looked forward to this one because it's a good way for kids to understand emotions and that you have to feel all the things. And very, very good. And she was very happy that schools were bringing people, or, or kids, I guess, to, um, to learn about, I guess how emotions work in a very fun way and that it's all right to be different and so yeah it was it was one of those things that i personally like to be alone even though i want cinema to do well and i want people to go to cinema i don't want them near me um (laughs) um, but it was good it was fun and the kids were quite quiet most of the time i was okay with it and it's a kid's film so fine yeah i i i want films to be very busy apart from all of my screenings which i want to be <laughs> yes. me exclusively thank you very much do not turn up yes. <laughs> yeah we feel the exact same. can i turn it up to your screenings is that okay or no I, mm, that no too you're too close no. <laughs> too close <laughs> fair enough oh uh, yeah fair. so that, uh, going back to the, the the box office and things based on yes, yes, yes. opening day opening weekend yeah uh like i haven't i genuinely haven't seen uh a film be that busy in 
this year. A while. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it'll probably be... Uh, like... Uh, was it, was, was it I, really Spider-Man was No busy. Way Home? Oh, yeah. That was, Dune was quite busy. I, I don't actually think my showing was because I went I, very yeah, early. Yeah, no, it, ours wasn't... Ours wasn't as busy as this, but it was the next busiest. Before that, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I think Wonka was quite busy for us actually as well. Uh, no, I think I avoided everyone for that as well. So <laughs> I'm really, I'm You're normally, well, quite, well I'm normally, honestly, normally, if I'd have, I'd have seen how busy this showing was, and I wouldn't have gone. I'd have just waited. But because we've got to do the podcast, uh, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll commit, and I will put up with the two teenagers who <laughs> occasionally mumbled behind me. But there's no point in telling yeah. them to shut up. Because there's a bunch of crying kids over there. So what's the point? <laughs> Very true. Very um, true. So I have a <laughs> feeling you, 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 I had a feeling, a feeling that you were going to want to go yes. into a lot more detail about the meanings and all of, all of that stuff. Oh, than, I, than do. I want to, but I just want to give you my general opinion of the film first, which is, yes, I liked this film, but I didn't love it. it okay. Was, it was just, it was, it was quite good. There's some, there's some good jokes. There's, uh, yes, there's some brilliant jokes. Uh, there's some funny visuals uh, and, and I enjoyed, like a bit of word playing kind of stuff like that. Um, without, without going into too many spoilers, they end up uh, having to go through through uh, Riley's mind again, uh, much like the first film, uh, trying to find their way to, yep. get, to get a MacGuffin, etc. Uh, and, you know, there's some fun uh, brainstorms uh, and <laughs> sarcasms. Yes. Ah! <laughs> Sarcasm was fantastic. Oh, oh, I loved it. That's no, incredible. <laughs> but also that entire five minute scene where they're shouting across it and the people on the other side oh, hear the sarcastic so... version of what they're saying. Yeah. Beautiful scene. It turns everything you say to sarcasm. And these two like just workers in the brain are like, well, these guys are rude. They're so rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there was I, I agree, it was a good film. I really did enjoy it. Um I don't think it was as good as the first. I think there was elements of the first that lent on more emotions like this one doesn't have as many <coughs> maybe like actually sad bits again i'm not a big crier at films but i uh, i know someone who is um <laughs> and this one i don't think really got her in the same way but it was a great film i think they explained some complex emotions very well mm. um which is difficult and <coughs> obviously it, the importance of the actual emotions but like yeah the jokes were brilliant um and that was what got me through it. And yeah, visually, it's quite nice as well. Yeah, I spent most of the film uh, suffering from uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth hand um, embarrassment, essentially, because of some of the choices and decisions that these characters make, or the the emotions make, or, oh, or yeah, they, yeah. and they make uh, Riley do. I'm just like, oh my god, yeah. oh, stop it! It's so stupid. Why are you doing this? I'm cringing here. Stop it. Which probably was why I didn't enjoy it as much, because I hate secondhand embarrassment. It's why I don't watch certain no, shows no. and stuff. I, I'm i exactly the same. I hate sort of shows that purposely make you cringe. Mm. Um, there's very few that do it well, and the rest of them just like, makes me feel a bit awkward. No, no, it's supposed to, but not for me. Yeah. <coughs> what I do think it, it did well, like you say, the little the jokes around things, like obviously the sarcasm, going to the back of the mind, um, explaining that, obviously in the first one, it's all about how each memory you have is tied to emotion and by the end of it they're like oh well emotions can be mixed you can have a sad thing that leads to a happy thing and vice versa and then right at the beginning of this one they go through well now we have these memories that turn into beliefs and that makes you you and it's it's kind of a good oversimplified but a good way to explain it um and then yeah like i say these other emotions come in and they try and take over they're very much like well going through puberty is gonna need more complex emotions than you can handle and you don't know what you're doing and they they lock up um the, the first five emotions i they specifically bottle them up which i quite liked uh which is really really good again it's a stupid little joke but i also enjoyed that um yeah i, agree. I do want to say there's one thing that's on my list that um before this that the night they're woken up because puberty is happening you cut to where they sleep um and anger is sleep fighting um, i didn't notice that so he is. He's right in the middle of sleep fighting. And the reason it's important to me, in the, in the first film, obviously Amy Poehler is Joy and Rashida Jones plays the emotions of the cool girl at the end. Um, they're both from Parks and Recreation. And I'm almost certain the sleep fighting that Anger does is 
Nick Offerman's sleep fighting from Park and Rec. Oh, I see. Almost, I'm pretty certain, action for action, it's the same. Because I love that show. I love Nick Offerman, as I've mentioned before on this podcast. And I'm almost certain it was exactly right. I love that. <laughs> I, I, I was instantly like, take a look, look at the thing. <laughs> so, I'm a child. <laughs> Speaking of them, that the being woken up, though, wasn't one of them meant to be on duty to watch the watch the dreams? To hit the wake-up no. button? No, no. So the, they've done in the past... No, so they always did in the previous, um, but they don't have to. Like, they'll just be regular, regularly scheduled dreams, like programming. Um, they can stay awake and control it. But otherwise, the, the dream people will just put on whatever dreams they need. I see. I see. I thought they were just being lazy. I paid a lot of attention. <laughs> you, you know all the law. This is fantastic. Stuff. I do know all the law. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. yeah, I also enjoyed that the, 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 um, the workmen come in to rearrange the place uh for for puberty uh, and then they just leave halfway through they're on break uh, which I, is an excellent i wondered thing for puberty oh, in I, general just to leave it like i completely agree i, I think it's brilliant like it's it's one of those things that yeah it's it's unfinished it'll take some time uh, i was wondering if that was gonna be a particularly triggering uh, experience for you right now <laughs> like <laughs> just workmen turning up and not finishing and then leaving early <laughs> sitting in there <laughs> Uh, well, I didn't see any of them just sitting on their phone, so it was fine. Uh- <laughs> true, very true. Um, I do like that they brought back some things like the train of thought. Um, they had, oh, what was the other one? The stream used, of consciousness uh, is good. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes. Again, these it's small little word plays, but they do it so well. Yeah. Um, I yeah. enjoyed all of those aspects, apart from the uh, secondhand embarrassment that I get stuck with. Well, I yeah. will say... Um, and then I should probably let you get into you wanted to discuss meanings and things. Is uh, I think this is a better <coughs> story around puberty um, than uh, Turning Red, which is the Pixar film that got dumped on Disney Plus during or just yeah. after somewhere during the, during the COVID. Who knows? Um, which I've only seen once, but if I remember correctly, is a metaphor for periods, uh, with the moral of the story being just learn to control them and you'll be fine. So I think this wow. is I pretty that's how I took it anyway. <laughs> I, I've not seen that film to be fair, but damn, if uh, that's the message. Yeah, it's basically she turns into a red panda uh, that's the uh, once a month kind of that's metaphor. the that's the yeah. that's the and then just get get used to could just do better. Well. Um <coughs> speaking of um No, I'll let you talk. You go. No, I was going to say, so um, a lot of the stuff I want to discuss when it comes to meanings might have to be in spoilers, because it does tend to be a bit later on. Um, I do think there is one glaring error in this, but I'd be interested to get your point, and I don't think it's a a spoiler. Okay. So, in the first film, obviously you have the five emotions, and every time you cut to the parents, it's the five emotions, and the kids, it's the five emotions, and the dog, it's the five emotions. And even in this film, the parents and stuff still have the same five emotions, Why do, why does Riley have extra emotions? No one else does. And like, I've, do these do these emotions just disappear after puberty? Like, I've got the same note. I've got the same note. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hang on, hang on a second. What do you mean? So yeah, yeah, the parents don't get embarrassment or jealousy or ennui or or um yeah, like or anxiety. The, the main one <laughs> that I've forgotten somehow. Like, like, but they're the only parent, like the only adults we ever see. Like I say, in in the oh no, guess not. Guess not. Anyway, in, in most of it, we see kids and animals and stuff, but mainly they're the main parents that we see. And what, like I say, you just lose these emotions. Like you go through puberty, you're done, you've grown up, and suddenly anxiety's gone, envy's gone. If you're a healthy person, these things disappear. That's not a good message. <laughs> also, the parents should definitely have uh, an emotion who pops in and out and keeps getting shuffled away. The sweet little old lady, nostalgia. Oh, that was awesome. Where's she nostalgia in the parents' heads? This is madness to me. Yeah. They, that should <laughs> no. nostalgia should be running the show in the parents' head because yes. listen, I'm 34 now, and that's what's going on in my brain. <laughs> oh. oh, you're old. I forgot that. <laughs> Thanks. <so much. laughs> uh, oh, um, yeah, yeah. I do I, think your nostalgia played some great points and and just popping up and saying like tiny little lines and the point when they first see nostalgia and they're like you don't turn up for another twenty years after two graduations. Like, <laughs> it was very well done. It was such a good controlled joke. Yeah, no, I. <coughs> there's, like I say, there's good jokes. They're they they be good jokes in this one. I have this film does like also, the previous one gives me so many questions about how the human body actually works because yeah. it's just it's just there's jokes yeah. and I'm like but hang on hang but but what 
What okay. do you mean? Hang on. How does this work? Oh, what, what, I'll forget about it. What do, you, what do you want to know? What can we discuss? Also, no. I want to point out um, it's got very dark in this room, so I'm going to turn on a light so people don't reckon like sunny. Boom. I'm light. Or did it's it turning on light, no, everybody. It it's it? turning on lights. Ah. Mid, mid-podcast. Cool. It's, it's lighter in here now. <laughs> very much so. Come on. What do you want to know, Bobby? Let, let, oh, let me I, tell you just about stuff in general. Stuff. <laughs> just stuff in general. If I think of it, I'll let you know. Do you want to have the but... conversation? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, throughout, throughout the movies, I'm like, does this make... What? I don't know. Uh, it's one of those things. Like, it's, definitely... it's a fun, it's a fun, uh, easy reference, like material. You know, it's not yes science or anything. Obviously, yeah, it's not. It's not perfect. It's uh, it's an easy, understandable version of some top level concepts. Yeah, I mean, it's a kids but movie. It does Sorry. it well. Yeah, this is yeah. Like, I, I've been harsh with kids movies before, expecting them to be more than they are. Um, this one, I'm going to try and tone it down a bit. Um, yeah. But it does explain it quite well. And again, the visuals work quite nicely. The, the idea that anxiety overthinks and they have a, a group of people planning for the worst, which obviously fits the story quite nicely. But then Joy kind of comes along and says, well, how about the good things too? And suddenly there's a nice balance. Anxiety doesn't have to be only bad. People think of it as the bad option only, but you can also be anxious for good things. The amount of times people have something happening the next day and they're very looking forward to it and they're happy about it and they can they can spook themselves out of it. I had this when I was a kid where I'd, I'd, I'd overthink things and give myself a migraine and I'd miss out on the thing I wanted to do. <laughs> like, <laughs> you. Yeah, terrible. Ooh. But it can be good things. You don't have to be anxious about bad things only. Yeah. Which I liked. It's very true. Um, I also think it's probably just easier to discuss. I, I feel like we skirted around some spoiler kind of things already. I think it would be easier if we just went in and then we could just talk about any, any yeah. worries about meanings and... Other other yes. little notes and, and bits of bobs. Um, I'm just going to scan my notes real quick just to make sure I haven't mentioned anything. Not that it matters because we can just mention it in a second. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, the moral of the story. I reckon I can say this without spoilers. My, the moral I took away from the story is uh, don't let yourself be ruled by anxiety or you're going to have a bad time. But more importantly, don't be too embarrassed to correct somebody about where you're from because they're going to give you the the uh, nickname from the state you're not from, and it's going to be really embarrassing for yep. the entire film. Yeah, you're not from Michigan. Just tell them it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 the message I got from it is very much like in the first film. Um, all of your emotions matter. You can't be ruled by one. It's all if about balance, all time, baby. Yeah, annoyingly, South Park and a few other shows do it really well, where they talk about if you're if you're happy all the time then you don't feel the the massive highs of pure joy because you have no reference. You need the lows to balance the highs. And this is kind of the same. Like, It's absolutely fine to think about the future and be anxious for it as long as you don't let it consume you. Mm. It's totally fine to feel embarrassment because you do something in a public space. But again, don't let that ruin you. Like, Just everything in moderation, as pretty much is the same with all life, everything in moderation is good. Agreed. <coughs> All right, shall we uh, head full, uh, full, fully and officially into spoiler full town? Full spoilers. <gasps> yes. It's a thumbs up. Oh yeah. First, we've got to up. go give a thumbs up. I forgot up. we do this. I'm yeah, we do. Lie. Every episode. <laughs> I'm so unprofessional. I don't know. Is this episode twenty? I think it might be. Twenty thumbs up. Oh damn. I haven't given twenty thumbs up. I've definitely given some thumbs down. Oh. Uh, okay, we're in big time spoiler time. Spoiler talk from here on out. If you don't hear any spoilers, <gasps> skip to the outro or oh, bye. Uh, okay, <laughs> you know, you know. Come back after you've seen the film, though, please. Yeah, yeah please do. Um, right. Ah, uh, shall I let you go? I got, I got a couple. No, of, no, you go I first. Got a I, of I have two main ones, but you go first. And... All right. I want to talk about briefly what I call a. You're a bit of a knob section. So done. Love it. This is my. And this may be a recurring feature of wearing a character. <laughs> you're a bit of a knob. Um, her friends pair of knobs i'll tell you why so they're gonna go off the entire film is based on this moment essentially yeah her two friends tell her mere minutes before they get to hockey camp that oh no we're not actually going to your high school with you next year we the pair of us are going to a different high school which causes riley to yeah. spin and anxiety is going oh mother i've got to like well, we've got to control this how long did they know uh, they, there's no oh, yeah, way they just while. found out that's rude. No, no. Rude. And a, a big thing as well, this is a recurring theme for Riley, because obviously in the first film, she gets taken away from her family and her team and her kids. Uh, not her family. She stays with her family, uh, her friends. Um, and she has to make new friends. And suddenly she makes these new friends and gets on a new team. And then two years later, it's happening again. Mm. And these people she trusts more than anyone have kept this from her. Like, you know what? 
I don't think Riley's perfect in this entire story, but in that specific point, she did nothing wrong there. And yeah. Her reaction to it is absolutely fine. Yeah, agreed. Second part of uh, my brand new segment of You're a Bit of a Knob, Mate. Um, is that what I called it a second ago? That's what I'm calling it now. No, nope, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I found the teacher slash coach to be a bit of a knob. I'll tell you why. Yep. Uh, so she invites three... Uh, younger kids to join the the, the 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 older kids at the hockey camp and then is shocked to learn when they're a little bit immature and excited and they're just taking some pictures of the first time at hockey camp oh this is so cool this is so cool yeah. and they they don't quite notice that she's come into the room and said right attention please so she takes phones off every everybody for three yeah. days you'll get them back at the end of camp she says that's outrageous you can't do that and then riley takes the blame for it when her friends were just as involved um yep. uh, outrageous behavior i was like listen this is a voluntary camp as far as i'm aware you can't be doing this also don't the parents want to text like get a message from their kids at the end of the day going uh, that's what they said yeah so in the fact that they haven't been able to warn the parents that you're not going to get a message parents will freak out yeah like you, you've been told message when you can and now suddenly you get nothing for a couple of days they're assuming their kid's dead <laughs> worst worst coach slash teacher um, anyway, that's yeah. been my brand new segment of You're a Bit of a Knob Mate, or whatever I called it. Thank you. Shall I do a graphic? I won't. I'm too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, everyone, like, obviously, this is like teenagers, um, but everyone's a bit of a knob at some point. Obviously, Riley ha- has lost some of her emotions and letting new emotions take over. Um, so she's a bit of a knob to her friends. Um, the <laughs> Firehawks, I'm rolling with your thing. This is the new um, segment. This is, this is the spoiler <laughs> section from now on. <laughs> You're a bit of a knob, mate. Um, yeah, the, the Firehawks, the, the team she wants to be part of. Again, like you say, they're a bit older. They, she mentions that she has a favourite band. And they're like, Haha, you're a child. Like, yeah, yeah, she is a child. Yeah, like, she's younger than you. Calm she's, the hell down. She's, she's younger than you. Let her have a band. Yeah, what are you doing? Maybe it's a rude. Yeah. Maybe it's a rude, older did, kids. I did enjoy the part, like, obviously she's walking off with them to have pizza and stuff in the evening. Um... And she's walking behind, forgets how to walk, and doesn't really <laughs> that's pay a attention, very, that's which a very is really, really sequence. good. Yeah. Um, and I think doesn't Ennui just be like, this is what pockets are for? <laughs> Hands in pockets. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Very, very well. It's, I think it's a good scene. Ennui had far too small a part in this. Like, the, the points that they did were very well done, um, but too small a part. And I don't know if that's because it's technically sort of like a, a boredom emotion, so it doesn't want to be involved too much, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would like to see more. Like obviously, anxiety takes the the main rein in this. Um, well, that's with yeah. A little bit of yeah. That's the Which that's the thing. Me to... the anxiety just takes over and and just pushes everybody aside. And I'm not entirely sure why the other emotions are so, like the new other emotions are so fine to just roll with it. Um, yeah. But... So this takes me to another spoiler thing that I like, and I assume you've got a note for this too. Is sort of like um, in the sort of climax of the story when anxiety is freaked out about. They've read the coach's diary and they're not going to... They might not be taken into the team next year. Um, and anxiety's freaking out. You need to score three goals. So she tackles one of her teammates. She hurts one of her friends. Anxiety has this sort of, like, breakdown. And it's very much, to me, it's, obviously it's an anxiety attack. Um, because Riley is sort of hyperventilating, uh, looks kind of pained. And I think they do a really good uh, job of showing how that could look. Like, your anxiety is just running wild and it's... It, it's you've lost complete control even anxiety kind of freezes yeah. it's just gone um i think that that was a really really good way of showing it which i quite liked well i've got the note here actually of uh this is the second film in a row where we've seen uh like a panic attack and yes. uh, and i did want to know your thoughts compared to uh bad boys uh which is still not called bad boys for life inexplicably uh bad boys yeah. ride or die and this one i presume you preferred this one because it didn't involve just lots of slapping yeah, so um, it's it's uh, the anxiety attack for Will Smith was. It's a thing to add now. A lot of action films have it. It's a, I don't know, a, a weakness. I know it's not a weakness, and I do not want to be roasted for like saying it. But in that world, in that scene, it kind of is. In this, they show what it is. They show how it actually affects you. Um, I would have liked maybe someone skating up and talking to her about it rather That's than finishing what... off the end of the attack but obviously they come over and they console and everyone gets on okay but it's not it's it's a it's integral part of the story rather than something that's been added in superfluously for no reason yeah i really thought her so friends okay were going to come over and at the well, same time as the looks... emotions coming 
uh, together yes. that they the friends were going to re- reconcile and that, and that would calm everybody the com- combination would calm everything down and then yeah um yeah so yeah no i think it would, it would be nice symmetry on that as well like you could have a cut back and forth um would have been good uh, don't get me wrong i think they did a good job of it but there's always there's room for improvement yeah um so here's my here's one of my my points uh okay uh, it, once when they're um when they're all thrown in the bottle and become suppressed emotions um there's a mention of uh what's riley's big secret big dark secret yes um uh, alongside a a video game character who's just the world's greatest attack move i've ever seen in my life yeah. <laughs> um and i thought i would just quickly discuss what you think that might be because i've been reading what the internet has to say about this sort of thing uh which is that riley uh might be gay or lgbt plus etc uh but what do you think do you think that's going to be is that is that sequel sort of thing or do you reckon something else entirely or just nothing as i mentioned before we started this i annoyingly um got a call about four minutes from the end like i had to rush out as soon as the film finished there is a post credit scene oh well i never watch post credit scenes so do you know what it is and can you tell me so I, again, I had to do some research. I had to look into it. And the post credit scene apparently is Joy going back to find out what the big bad secret is. Oh, really? Yes. And, uh, cr- again, correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't see it. I apologize. Usually I do hang around for, for credits. I never do. Um, but apparently uh, she burnt a hole in a rug and she's scared oh. to tell her parents. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's it's if that's the truth, it's really <laughs> underwhelming. Like that's I completely probably. agree. I, yeah, it it should be something bigger, like the whole LGBTQ plus. Like obviously, that isn't something you should have to hide. <clears throat> but I understand why it would be a thing you have to hide, or something maybe a bit bigger. Like I understand that you're a, still a child and you're concerned about telling your parents. Like I have some stuff that I'm what thirty one now, and I still haven't told my dad that I did stupid stuff when I was a kid. Like everyone has that thing but it's yeah. it could have been done if that is what actually happened it could have been done so much better yeah see and, what i was going to say about the the gay theory uh is that there's nothing to suggest that in this film at all yeah. um i think a lot no. of people thought it might have been based on the some trailers and how riley looks at the um the captain of the hockey team and things yeah. like that kind of but um maybe it's for another, a sequel maybe they'll never tell that story maybe they never have any intent on sending that story uh, but also she's 13 yep. in the film so just let's leave it alone uh maybe yep. when she's older and i know she's starting to go for puberty oh. but another time it would be good yeah like jump forward to the next film she's maybe 16 to 18 um starting dating like there is a, a spin-off um like short by the way of riley's first date which i actually haven't seen either i should have done beforehand um, i didn't even um, know that existed <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a spin-off. I wanted to watch it. It's on our watch list, but we didn't get around to it. Um, so, but it would be interesting to to see if that is part of the secret or a secret she has later on. And obviously, that is a difficult time as a young person to to navigate. So, it would be a good next episode or next uh, next film chapter of yeah. the the story. Yeah, yeah. And I do That's firmly good. believe there will be a, a third. Um, I don't yeah. know if it'll take another well, nine years to make, but oh, I, I reckon there will but, be. But thirty million in a day isn't bad. Like in a single day isn't bad. Well, and it was a Friday. Yeah, we'll see what those projections end up end up being. But based on how packed the yeah. cinema I was in and you were in and the ones were around it, yeah. uh, and you know, eighty to hundred million. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna do all right. I mean, it's a budget of two hundred, so it yeah. does it needs and it's been advertised quite heavily, so it's gonna need to make some money to to break even and and go above. But I reckon there probably yeah. will be. Uh, and also, I think this is a, a thing for Disney. And, Disney specifically, because they obviously own Pixar, to not just start cramming all their Pixar stuff onto Disney Plus to try and wow uh, new and pull in new members. Because if you make yeah. it, Pixar previously had a very good reputation for smashing these films. And when you put them yes. out into the cinema, they tend to do quite well. But if you dump them on streaming, I certainly have the opinion of, oh, it's on streaming? Hmm... Is it as good? That's how I any any film that goes straight to streaming. Nope. I'm like, uh, is the, why why is this I'm not come out? To agree. Why is this not yeah, made? No, it's the modern million? day equivalent to straight to DVD. And exactly. Like, um, yeah, like I I'm I'm more than happy to have 
quick to streaming. So as soon as it's done in the cinema, I maybe give it a week and then go to streaming. So I, I actually disagree. I think that's really cut the legs out of cinema doing that method. Uh, mm, and I true. think it's trained people to go, no, I won't go and see that film because it will be on X streaming platform in okay, a that month is to a fair three point. months rather than leaving things out yeah. for longer to do well. And then you have yeah. to wait for the DVD at like Christmas or something. So I really do think actually the streaming services, essentially thanks to COVID, um, just yeah. chucking things on really quickly. I think it really has cut the legs out. And it's one of the main reasons in my opinion, also potentially a slight dip in quality of films, uh, that, you know, we're having a poor box office this year because Look, I, people I will just wait. I, They'll be like, no, nah, go, go into the cinema is so expensive. I'll just wait. I'm already paying for Netflix yeah. or whatever. No, I completely forget that sometimes people aren't exactly like me in the way that I take films <laughs> very seriously. Yeah. Um, I want to go on the day. I want to go on the first day. I want to see the new film. Yeah. Uh, and but I like, prefer watching in the cinema. So, Oh, 100%. Like, obviously, I with what I do for a living, like I see the cinema as, like, the epitome of your best quality, your best sound, like, your your movie-watching experience is as good as it should be. Like, these films are made specifically, IMAX specifically, obviously, it's done for the type of screen you're watching on. Yeah. But I also, like, I've seen the film. I know I can see the films multiple times for free, and that's fine, but I also want to then be able to watch it in the comfort of my own home. I forget that not everyone thinks like that, where I will go do it. And then I want to see it at home when I'm comfortable. Yeah. Because um, I also don't get comfortable in cinemas in the same way. I do. I, I, I like a cinema, but no. I do. I, I mean, my, most, my cinema's no. comfy. I've been in other <laughs> ones which are not comfy at all. Uh, we, uh, we've we gone long, so uh, let's start oh, to, okay. to wrap up. But um, I do have a couple of other things I yes. do, I want to say first. And if you do as well, we'll, we'll do those too. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but we kind of mentioned this earlier. Um, is Riley the only person to have like male and female emotions yeah everyone else seems to have them like themselves yeah so, so if you're the dad they're all male uh cast emotions now yeah. going back to the the lgbtq uh theory that i was just telling you about do you think uh that this is uh, a sign that she uh, that riley might be non-binary uh maybe because uh, again you see it on the internet these series being cast out or do you think Disney slash Pixar have now found themselves in a bit of a, oh, the fans are expecting something like this maybe in the third film. Well, there were, some of them were definitely expecting it in the second film. Uh, where actually it's probably just a reality of casting choices to make a more diverse and interesting <laughs> cast lineup in the original film. And the joke of it being all, all male or female uh, in the parents' head is just funnier when the counterparts yeah. are portrayed slightly differently and when anger is a is a you know a female character as opposed so, to the one we see in Riley I originally thought that the main thing is like you cut to her parents heads or the other popular kids heads and you see all the emotions looking like them it's just a way to differentiate this isn't Riley's mind um yeah but it now obviously has set up uh, a bit of world building and a bit of lore of well everyone else has this why don't you yeah now obviously she could be the only potential like uh, person with body dysmorphia and, and maybe not knowing who they are. Uh, but I do. I think that might be looking a bit too heavily in. I reckon it's interesting it if they run with that. Yeah, like you say, they might be kind of pushed towards it because it, it does fit. But I don't think that was the intention. Yeah, I think they could have used this film uh, <coughs> if they'd have seen the comments soon enough. Maybe they maybe they didn't at all. Uh, no, I think they've been existing since. I mean, it's been on the it's been around for nine years. This film, they could have like just cut this off at the pass. Uh, by showing, you know, anxiety and ennui and, and boredom and not boredom, sorry, um, the, 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 the embarrassment except, and jealousy uh, in the parents' heads or like the teacher's head or something with the mixed mixed casting if they wanted to. Yeah. But they, they, they haven't. Yeah. Mainly because I think the joke still works when you see mum reacting to um, uh, Riley's first day of puberty, which I, I do also yeah. enjoy. It just happens overnight. Like, just it. Bam! Okay. <laughs> Just a very quick thing. Um, obviously, this is kind of relating to the previous film, but uh, in the mum's head, sadness is taking over. In the dad's head, it's anger. Thoughts? Um, I want to know what happened to to dad um, as to why he's <laughs> led by anger. And the same with mum. Like, because Joy is the lead emotion because she's the first emotion, uh, kind of. In Yeah. Uh, she's the one, and then sadness arrives and... So did or, did was dad an, was dad an angry baby? What what happened here? 
Yeah, the, the thing is, we could do a whole episode discussing that, but it's an interesting take that that's the way they went with it. Yeah. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but it's an interesting idea. Again, I think it's just one of those things that it's just to show a, di- a difference in everything between especially between yeah. riley and her parents and it's just funnier to have yeah a, a difference like anger being the dad especially when he's re- he's you know he's meant to in that scene blow his top a little bit and everyone's yeah. like well calm down mate what are you doing so yeah, yeah. i think it's i think a lot of these choices are just done for the joke and then world building yes. is happening around pixar yeah whether they intend for it to happen or not essentially so We'll just see where they go, because I do believe there will be a sequel, and I will see it quite happily. I completely agree. Yeah. Do you have anything else to add? Do you want to talk about theories or, or meanings or anything like that? I think we could spend far too much time doing it. I've covered what I really wanted to cover. Um, I think it's a good uh, educational film. I really enjoyed it. I think the animation style they stuck to was nice, but they did it better. They added in the extra animation styles, which I didn't like for the the cartoon that Riley liked when she was a kid I didn't like that look I actually really enjoyed um Pouchy and the whatever the dog was called Bluffy uh yeah who Bluffy talking to a wall protect yeah when it cuts he's talking to the joke. audience I genuinely thought people in my audience were going to start talking back at one point I was like oh no you yeah. don't know what you've done film people are going to start yapping um but then it cuts to the the the, uh, the main emotions um opinion and he's just staring he's like this far away from a wall <laughs> it's, it's a very yeah, good it was joke. a good joke i just didn't like i don't like forced animation changes and i get it um like i didn't mind it so much for the car the game character i just it, i felt that that one was really jarring somehow it does um, it does again, look a bit think, weird definitely the, yeah. the, the distinct stylistic change um yeah. and to be honest you probably don't even need to you don't need to have i mean it's, it's obviously an artistic choice you don't need probably the the video game character to be the different style you don't need the wait yeah. no but no the the her imaginary friend in the first films a cartoon character as well with a different art style so actually it's it's what's on um it's on brand he's not got a different it's not a different art style it's a similar art style oh isn't he isn't he isn't he drawn in a different way no bing bong looks basically identical uh, we'll uh we'll uh we'll quickly see about this before we wrap up hey beardy do you want to start taking us home while i figure this out yeah, well, obviously, be, uh, you're not Biddy, you're, you're Bobby. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bobby doesn't trust me, so he's going to do his own little thing for a while. I'm going to do the whole, thank you very much for watching and listening, or listening, or whatever you're doing. YouTube, see our faces. I had a haircut. It looks interesting. Oh, Have no, you are right. You um, are right. It does look very similar. I'm exactly it? right. Might, I'm I might just right. be misremembering the scene where they go through the, the they get squashed into various different Yes, styles. abstract thought. Yeah, I think that's what's going yeah. on. Sorry. Yeah. Continue. Anyway, <laughs> you interrupted. Please find us on YouTube and Spotify YouTube to watch our pretty faces and see us all gesticulate and stuff. Uh, Spotify to listen to us whilst you drive or sleep. In your ears. Or whatever is important to you. It, just in your ears, not in your eyes. Well, actually, it will be in your eyes. We're going to get a Spotify deal soon, surely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, thank you. 20th episode. Big hire. We'll do something. I hope so. Big, uh, I hope I haven't got my maps wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, as always... Bobby, you find him on Twitch. You watch him do fun things. He's going to be building Lego sometime So soon, much Lego! It's unbelievable how so much, much I've Lego. got to build. Also, when you want some new Lego from now on, let me know. Uh, I can look after you. You can hook um, me up. He's my Lego dealer. I'm everybody. a Lego dealer. You heard it. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah bobby is uh streaming on twitch on bobby android i am still not doing that do not find me please do not find me um leave me alone except on this podcast where come find me um, <laughs> but as always thank you so much for watching and listening have a good amount of time until the next one and we'll see you then <laughs> these outros are going off the rails mate thanks so <laughs> much really for watching <laughs> bye thanks. bye